are crowns in heaven. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10 tells us that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while here on earth, whether good or bad. First, let's be clear, this has nothing to do with our salvation. As believers in Christ, we are saved by faith and not works. It is not our good deeds that will get us into heaven, but our gratitude to Christ for His gift of salvation is expressed in our good works here on earth, which in turn will bring us rewards before the judgment seat of Christ. A judgment seat in ancient Greece was a platform in Greek towns where orations were made, decisions handed down by rulers, and where awards were given out to the winners of athletic competitions. At the judgment seat of Christ, the Bible talks about believers receiving five different crowns. One is the crown of righteousness. In 2 Timothy 4 it says, Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. This crown is not only for those who eagerly await Christ's return to earth, but those who seek a deeper intimacy with God. While faith in Christ alone justifies us as righteous before God, as a result, we are expected to honor His sacrifice by living righteous lives, doing the right thing at the right time for the right reason, with compassion. The book of James tells us, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love Him. The crown of life is for those who endure trials, suffering, persecution, and even death for Christ's sake. In the book of Revelation, John prophesies Jesus' words to the church of Smyrna, saying, Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. Another is the crown of victory, sometimes called the imperishable or incorruptible crown. It is given for spiritual discipline, self-control, and perseverance. It is for those who faithfully run the race, putting aside selfish desires and pointing others to Christ. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, Run so that you may obtain the crown of victory. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things, but they do it to receive a perishable crown. But we do it for a crown that will last forever. The crown of glory is for godly leaders who care for their flock, teaching them to obey God's commandments. 1 Peter 5 says as elders, to willingly shepherd God's flock, not for personal gain or in an overbearing way, but as an example to those entrusted to you. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Whether we're ordained pastors, lay Sunday school teachers, missionaries, youth leaders, musicians, or small group facilitators. When the Chief Shepherd appears, we will receive the crown of glory. The crown of rejoicing will go to those who are faithful witnesses to God's grace, leading others to Christ. It is given to those who are willing to be used by Him to witness to others, not by a tally of the number of souls saved. Remember, we plant and water, but it is God who makes His Word grow in people's hearts. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming? In the book of Daniel it says, Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. In addition to these five crowns, there are a number of other rewards talked about in the Bible for such things as loving your enemies, righteous living when no one sees, and acts of kindness. But beware, while you cannot lose your salvation, you can forfeit your rewards. Satan can deceive you into nullifying them by using self-centered or impure motives. As it says in 1 Corinthians 13, our gifts, services, and sacrifices are worth nothing if not done in love. 
When we receive our crowns, Revelation 4 tells us that because Christ is worthy of everlasting praise and worship, we will in all joy cast those crowns at His feet. But for those who have earned no rewards, they will miss out on this, having nothing to offer. So is the desire for reward a proper motive for serving God? Pastor and international Bible teacher Warren Wiersbe tells us that the fact that God does promise us rewards is proof enough that the motive is not a sinful one. But it may not be the highest motive. The important thing is not the reward itself, but the joy of pleasing Christ and honoring Him. Certainly the crowns of European monarchs from recent centuries shown here were not the style of those imagined by Paul or James in the first century or even Daniel 500 years before that. What crowns do you want to receive at the judgment seat? Whatever the fashion of the headdress, our crowns will bring us honor and our honor will then be offered in worship to Christ.